Hey guys, <clears throat> how you doing? This is Kia Corner, also known as Mr. Finance, and I just want to come on real quick, and um, I want to start off the day by telling you guys to bow your heads and pray, and I want you guys to pray for this world, for everybody, good or bad. I want you to pray, because one of the things I learned about um, affirmations is that the energy that you put out there is what will come back to you. And the energy that we think about is what will attract. So one of the things I want us to do um, this beautiful morning and for us moving forward, guys, I want us to pray. I want us to pray a prayer um, where we speak greatness into each other. Where we speak greatness into ourselves. We speak strength in all our weakness. And we put positive energy out there. Because one of the things I've learned is that fire does not put out fire. And adding wind to fire creates a blaze. And one of the things what we have to do in these times is that we got to learn when we got to be the earth. And when we got to be water. So when there's water, when there's when 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 there's fire, we must add water, or we got to be the earth. And when there is when there is dry, when the earth is dry, we must be the 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 solutions, which is the water. We we're, we're in times now where we're adding fire on fire, or we adding wind to fire, and this fire is catching blaze because of the energy. The energy, and I understand the propaganda because you know what? I almost became a victim of it. I was watching all the things that I was displaying on my timeline and I felt all this energy that I was bearing up because I love myself and it was so tied to me, you know, being the father of black kids. Not even just black kids. My kids are biracial. So the thing that I'm looking at is like the energy, the energy that I almost put into it or feed into it. We got to pay attention to that because at the end of the day, guys, the energy that we will put out there is just adding more fuel. It's more wind. It's more wind to the fire. And we cannot add wind to fire. We got to have water. We got to bring peace. We got to bring understanding. We got to bring love. It's the only thing we could do. Now, I just want to come on and share that with you guys because if I'm feeling that, I know you guys are feeling it too. And like I said, we got to be, we, we got to pray. We need more prayer. We got to pray. We got to have faith. We got to take the necessary, the, 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 the proper actions. We got to take proper actions. All right. Um, we just got to love, man. You know, and yes, it's still Black Lives Matter because I, I heard this analogy um, and, I, and I loved it. And I wanted to share this with you guys. I heard the analogy and the person said the reason why it's Black Lives Matters, right? The reason why it's Black Lives Matters, and she used this analogy to explain it. And I hope you guys understand this too. She said the reason why it's Black Lives Matter, she said, think about the fact that you have four houses, right? You have four houses. I said out of the four houses, one of the house caught fire, right? One house caught, caught fire. And she said when the fire department come, the fire department is not going to focus on the houses that are not on fire. They're going to try to put out that one house that's on fire. So all the attention is to the house that's on fire they're not looking at the houses that's not on fire so now the reason why they pay attention to that one house that's on fire is because if you put out that one fire then the other houses around it may not catch on fire so the reason why they said black lives matter is because black lives matter is like that analogy that if we had four houses which could represent four races right if you have like caucasian latinos you know the Asians and the black. And if the black house is on fire right now, 
all the attention has to go towards that black house to put out that fire, right? So that way the, the Latino, the Asians, the Caucasian house don't get burned down, right? So that's why it says Black Lives Matters, and that's why we have to really pay attention to all the black lives right now, because that's the house on fire. And I was like, wow, that was such an amazing analogy to explain why black lives matter. It's not that all the houses is not important. It's just that this one house is on fire right now. And we have to put all our attention on it because if this house burned down, then the potential little the Latina house may burn down, the Caucasian house may burn down, the Asian house may burn down. Just to give you an analogy to explain to you why black lives matter, right? And it's a very simple one. And when I saw that, I was like, that is such well explained because... It's not that we're not saying all lives matter. We're saying that black life matters the most right now because that's the house on fire. And we have to put out the fire in that house before we can look at all four of the houses. Because if this house don't go out, then this house may catch on fire. This house may catch on fire. This house may catch on fire. Fire. You understand? And I was like, that was such an amazing analogy to explain why we say black lives matter. It's not that we're not saying all lives don't matter. We're saying that right now, the black lives on fire. We're the one that's getting you know, victimized and all these different things. So, but what I'm saying is, guys, let's pray. Let's pray. You know, we got to pray to God. We got to beg Father God to watch over our brothers and sisters and watch over all our fellow comrades too, right? We got to look over our fellow comrades too because everybody's in it with us. And you got to realize that this is not just a black thing. This is affecting people that that love us. You know, a lot of people don't know history. Did you guys know that when Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass was freeing slaves, did you know that it was the, the really nice Caucasian white people that was helping us get into Canada and crossing over state lines to get us across to freedom? It wasn't just black people that was helping us through freedom. I hope you guys know that history. Because it's not every white person that feel that, that that is racist. You know, it's not everybody. So I don't put all people in one bucket and say, oh, you all are racist. No. There's a few racists. And there's a lot more that do not actually stand with it. You understand? It's just that the, my mom always says that empty barrels will make the most noise because it's empty, it's hollow. So when you throw something in it, it makes a much bigger noise. And I hate to say it, the racist people, and I, I'm putting them all in one category, they make the most noise. It's like an empty barrel. It, it will make the most noise because it's going to get the most attention. And that's the reason why today we're seeing it more is because I hate to say it, but the propaganda that is happening to us is where if, if, if you guys don't know that this been brewing up, do you understand what I'm saying? This has been brewing up since day one and it's all the propaganda. And I was sitting here having a really good dialogue with a very, you know, intellect friend of mine. And we were talking about the the back end of this whole thing that could happen. And I'm talking about a financial perspective of this, right? And that's why it's so important to learn more about finance, guys, because if you don't understand finance, then most of what I'm going to talk about, you wouldn't pre- really understand, but it's okay. Um, that's why I'm here to teach. Think about this. If we're going to loot and burn down things, destroy our community, it's bad enough that um, we have limited supplies due to the whole shelter in place thing. So a lot of stores don't have like a lot of stuff in place right now so by destroying the places that's in your community and burning them down and looting them now that set us back even further you understand that set us set us back further you're not hurting that store they have insurance and for those of you that don't know what insurance is is that you could have burned down that place you could have destroyed it they didn't lose a penny a matter of fact 
what you did was guarantee that they made the money. If you didn't know that. Burning down and looting places doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt the owner. If anything, you just guarantee that he's going to claim, put claims on all of the things that you took, and he makes a guarantee sale. That is a guarantee sale because the insurance company is going to cover all the items that was inside his store. So he doesn't lose anything. But what you may lose now, though, what you may lose is that actual store if they actually want to reopen back in that neighborhood. So now your neighborhood no longer have access to that store and you may have to travel even further distance to get things that you need. Now, not only that, if the business leave from your store, oh my God, this is getting deeper than you even truly understand, guys. You know what? I should do a live. I should do a live on that. And I think that's what I'm going to do is the, the after effect, the after effect of looting and burning down building in your, in your community, what I mean, because did you know what offset the taxes in your neighborhood is the amount of businesses that's in your neighborhood? And if these businesses leave your neighborhood, then your taxes will go up. And if your taxes go up and you can't afford the property taxes of your own houses in your neighborhood, then you force you to move out. So now you, you just created your own gentrification on yourself. You just created gentrification on yourself. You just created your own red line. You just devalued your property. And guess what? If now you can't afford the property tax in your neighborhood because you got rid of all the businesses that was offsetting the taxes in your community, then that's the reason why everybody else will come in and come buy up your houses and the penny on the dollar. So now you lost your property, your neighborhood, and your, 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 your peace of mind. So most of the time when these riots, you got to really pay attention. And why is it being triggered? Who's triggering it? Right? It's a guaranteed sale when you loot and break into the building. They guarantee to make the money because the insurance will cover the costs and damages. And you will lose that business, which then offset the taxes in your community. And because there's not enough business to offset the taxes in your town and neighborhood, now the tax is going to go up on your properties. Because someone got to pay the tax and you got rid of the businesses that used to do it. So now that force, that force you to leave your own neighborhood because you can't afford the tax in the town anymore. The tax has gone up. There's not enough business there anymore. So now you create your own gentrification. So guys, it's deeper. It's so much deeper than that. But nobody's looking at it from a financial standpoint where this can affect others. You know what really scares them the most, guys? And if you really want the facts, if you want to protest properly, and you want to see things happen, what scares them the most is if each one of you guys have a million dollars in life insurance. And every time they kill anybody, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. They kill one of you guys. Or kill one of us. The insurance companies start paying out millions of dollars on a monthly basis based upon the amount of people that's killed nationwide throughout North America or even Canada. If everybody had a million dollars in life insurance... Let me tell you, the lobbying, the lobbies will actually put in something that will actually protect the citizens from gun violence of the hands of anybody. It doesn't matter police and it doesn't matter by citizen. I guarantee they'll get much stricter because they're realizing that these insurance companies, which is owned by banks, will be paying out too much money on a monthly basis. And now it's bad for business. So if you ever want to make a change, you don't make a change by, um, by, by destroying the community. You make change by creating value upon self. And if self become more valuable, let me tell you, if they saw the, do you know right now, I think it's about 24%, if I remember correctly, uh, about 24 or don't quote me on this, but I think it's like 20 something 
or 44%, something like that. But I know it wasn't even 60%. So less than 60% of, our, of Americans hold individual life insurance. And most of the time, it's not even enough, right? So most of the time, it's not enough. I know it's not a million dollars in average person have in coverage. So because of this, they know for a fact that they know the numbers that most people don't have value. So there's no reason to put value on anybody. And if you want to put it in the black community, yes, a lot of, don't get me wrong though. There's a lot of black people that have life insurance, but they don't have enough. Like some people have like 20,000, 10,000, um, a hundred thousand. And if they did have it, they have like a term policy. That's like a, a 500,000. Some have a million dollar term policy, but they don't even have enough or the right coverage. Right? So because of this, it makes it hard for them. Good morning, Papa. It may makes it hard for them to understand um, the value of people. So imagine if they saw a rise in life insurance coverage amount of, let's say that they saw like, um, let's say they saw a trillion dollars in life insurance, right? Go up over the year as a, when, if Limer was to do a study and they see like, oh, a trillion dollars in life insurance put in place. And they're realizing that the average person now in America it went up from, say, it went up to like 70. 70% 70 of Americans have individual life insurance of a million dollars or more in coverage. You think by Limra running that stud studies, and if you don't know what Limra is, go research that. Limra, they do a lot of studies. Um, if Limra come out with a new study and said that over 60% of Americans have over individual life insurance over a million dollars or more, you think, you think the lobby, the lobby, the, the, the lobbyists would not put something in place to change the gun violence laws or even how a police can approach a, a citizen? Because now they, they're not, they, they don't want to lose a million dollars of their pocket. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what I meant by hit the pocket. Hit the pocket. You'll be protected. People will kill what they don't have value. And if they don't see value in you, they won't, they, they, they don't care. So just understand there's a bigger after effect. And it's a financial aspect that you got to look at it from. You got to see it from a financial standpoint. And that's the problem is that most of us is not financially literate for us to truly understand the back end of it so i just wanted to share that with you guys so remember guys just pray we got to pray we got to speak greatness into all weaknesses and we got to put positivity in all the negativity and we have to remember to put god first put god first in everything and pray and once we pray and pray for, pray for God to give you wisdom. Let me tell you, man. The best thing I ever prayed for was wisdom and understanding. And it changed my life. So, I hope I give you guys some nuggets and better understanding. And just say a prayer. Let's pray for everybody that's out there to be safe. And I know that you're frustrated. I know that you're angry. But be the voice of reasoning and understanding. All right. So I love you guys and please be safe. Please, you know, I know you guys are upset, man. I'm upset with you, but we can't put that energy and start destroying things because it will hurt us even more on the financial end of it. All right. So much love, everybody. Be safe. God bless you. And my prayers are with you. And my prayers are with all the victims and their families as well. All right. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Happy Sunday. All right. Bye-bye.